Who he is? Ash Jones, genius technomancer. If you want to know what the ash is short for, the answer is mind your bleeding business. I am a sophomore artificer student at Chowha College of Witchcraft and Wizardry. I'm in House Tarentius. Valor! Diligence! And I'm from Dublin in Ireland. Before attending Chowha, I was an apprentice artificer to me granny, Frances Jones. She took me in after me ma and dad died. I can never really repay her for everything she's done for me. But also, she's a brilliant technomancer. My own particular area of research is in the technomantic enhancement of human beings. One of our major folk heroes is a necromancer. So that left me with a certain attitude to roles that's gotten me threatened with expulsion a couple of times. I grew up in a mundane city. So I'm a big fan of mundane tech and mundane culture. There's no such thing as failure, there's only the scenic route to success. There is no shame in being on your fifth set of eyebrows. For a couple of weeks before the term started, I was talking on Choha book with the assistant technomancy professor. And she is a, she's a robot. She was a robot. Her name is Genesis. And she is an actual sending messages in binary made of machinery robot. She told me she had been designed by the Technomancy Professor. That made me very excited because that meant that Professor must be some kind of genius creating an actual humanoid robot that can have full-on conversations, actual conversations by itself, not some clever bot, chat bot nonsense. That's the juice. It's green. It's green, it's fresh apple. Yes, but that doesn't tell me what's in it. It's apple. There is green apple. Green alcohol. Green is not a flavor. Genesis. You can call her Jen. Jen. She likes Jen. <laughs> not lampshade. She's sentient. Oh. Very rude. Sentient. Conscious. Self-aware. So over the course of terms so far, I have found a mentor, interrogated prisoners, cast a spell on a teacher, found out my mentor was half a tricked a full fay and, and got the better out of the deal. Joined the time police, got me dimensional locator running, helped rescue me mentor from a hell dimension, participated in her arrest, discovered me miss missing uncle was dead, and my mentor's father, which therefore meant me mentor was me cousin. And honestly, I can't tell you everything because there's a million different things, so let's just go for the highlights. First day I decided to have a wee chat with the technomancy professor because she was the genius that had built Genesis. And I was thinking she might be able to help me with my dimensional locator, which so far had only ever exploded or filled a lab with scorpions or some other nonsense. It turned out her name is Professor Jones. Professor Jones. We got along immediately. No need to explain something. We grew up without parents. So I meet a slightly older professor teaching in my field. Who I get along with extremely well. And it was the same surname as me. You'll forgive me if I got attached very bloody fast. But that night one of my roommates tells me that Professor Jones is half a. Look, I'm Irish. We have centuries of cultural bias against the Fae. So we didn't know what to do with that. Luckily the next day Professor Jones was kind enough to talk to me about it. I left that conversation a slightly better person. At least I'm better with it now than I was then. So I was still able to enjoy the technomancy class. Are we about to have show and tell? Please. You want... That's the power source. Yeah? Yeah? Atomic as well. No shit. Did we invent the same fucking thing? <laughs> hers is nicer. You look good. Yeah, hers oh. is nicer. Obviously. <laughs> I'm a <the> sophomore. <laughs> The alchemy professor, Professor Brooke, he offers a chance for us to study a guardian sanctioned chronomancy class. Now chronomancy is illegal. And look, if I'm given a chance to legally do something illegal, I'm gonna jump straight into it. No fucking looking back at all. It wasn't exactly what I expected though. As a lot of these small spells, while small and arguably yes, more efficient. For the building blocks of the fundamentals of some of the most dangerous magic that exists on this world. He was demonstrating on prisoners of the Guardian Order. He was torturing them. And he was making them kill each other and then resetting them back to the point before they died. 
it was not easy to look at. I volunteered to do one of the spells anyway, it's valor, diligence, but putting that prisoner in stasis felt weird and wrong. The professor said he was looking for people to take further classes with a view to joining his branch of the Guardian Order that deals with people who are chronomancers. I felt like I had to join, only so I could do something about the people who were abusing it. it was, Chronomancy is too scary to let it just go out there and not do anything about it. Professor Jones approved of my decision and it meant a lot to me. Those warm, fuzzy feelings ended up backfiring a wee bit though. Professor Brooke rounded up all the students who'd volunteered for the Chronomancy classes and uh, said he needed our help. Uh, it turns out Professor Jones had gotten lost and went missing and was trapped in a hell dimension that Chronomancy was involved somehow. So we were gonna have to help Professor Brooke find her, bring her back and arrest her. It was not fun thought. We told Brooke the dimensional locator might be able to help find Professor Jones. We didn't mention all the problems we'd been having with it. We just said that the Professor Jones's infernal battery might be able to get it working properly. The weird thing was neither the battery Professor Jones made nor me dimensional locator needed much tinkering to get the two to work together. They were already very kind of similar tech. The locator ended up working. We found Professor Jones and Professor Brooke led us in opening a portal to pull her out. She was covered in blood and bite marks and what? Professor Brooke called time burns on her skin. All the shine had gone out of her. She was in a bad way. It wasn't easy to watch. We got her to the technomancy lab where she downed an ungodly amount of healing potion. And then Professor Brooke made the arrest. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, I'm not great at emotion stuff. But that really sucked. You guys helped a lot. Professor Jones all the two days, but from the moment I met her, I was hoping the name wasn't a coincidence. He made Dove call that wishful thinking. She was right. I was wishing. I was wishing that I'd finally found another member of my family that I could talk to and relate to. And felt like Professor Jones had been that. But a couple of hours later, we see Professor Jones cleaned up, looking her old self again, with her wrists tied together, being led through the halls by Professor Brooke. And the pair of them are playing music and laughing and dancing around. And then we realise, Professor Brooke is going to do everything he can to make sure Willow's okay. And if Willow can be dancing around the castle like that, but only a few hours after coming out of a hell dimension. You're too tough for anything to stop her. Later we had to talk. Surnames. The common interests. The similarities in our tech. My missing uncle. Who had been stolen by the Fae. Her dead father. Who had fallen in love with one. The fact that they had the same name. Dara Jones. Turns out I got me wish. I made the dimensional locator to find me uncle for Granny Jones. Turns out he died and left us a cousin. Granny Jones will be heartbroken to hear about Dara. But I think she's gonna love Willow. If we can get her over our fey racism. Facism. Uh, 
It senses my presence. <laughs>